welcome to the channel. It's discovery time and today two of our normal home cooks will be taste testing four fascinating global ingredients that in our little London bubble none of us have ever cooked with before and in cases ever even tasted before. I have a real love-hate relationship with how excited he gets about these videos. Yeah, it makes me nervous. Yeah. Still exploring. Still more new things to find. Oh, the head bubbles. Oh. Okay, boys, cloche number one. What have we got? Looks a bit like lychee. I was going to say a cross between popcorn and sweet corn. Oh, I'd say, okay, it's a fruity popcorn. It tastes Go on. of like bulgur wheat or quinoa or... It's stuffy, stick to it. It tastes like soggy popcorn. Oh, it does. <laughs> Boys, what you have in front of you is hominy. Doesn't which help. Which is indeed corn. Oh yes, look at that. Corn that has been dried and then rehydrated and cooked in lime. In lime? In lime. Yeah, as in alkaline. We did it a few weeks ago, nixtamalization. But before it gets turned into a flour, this is it. Was I in that video? I don't know. But I, if I, I wasn't in the video, I didn't watch it. I'm so. sure I wasn't there. That's my excuse for everything. I didn't go to school. Now you know that, where in the world do you think it might come from? Bolivia. Wow. wow. Tunisia. This is hominy from Mexico. You're in the right continent. <laughs> this is something that has been done for thousands of years. Basically, harvesting corn, drying it out, and then rehydrating it in that alkali solution, which makes it more digestible and therefore more nutritious in a bioavailable way. Would you like to see it in situ? Yes. It's already tasted. Ooh, uh, wow, what is that in there? It is a Mexican soup or stew. There's lots of different varieties of it, but it's called pozole. And then on the side, a whole bunch of condiments that you can kind of sprinkle and stir in. There are lots of different types of this particular dish. You can get blanco, verde, or rojo, which is basically white, green, or red. So like the flag, but also the original one is the white. The green has tomatillo and cilantro and jalapenos through it. And this is a red one that's got the chilies, things like ancho through it. Oh, wow. This particular one, slow cooked beef and tongue. Oh. But the base is often done with pork or chicken or beef. Although there are vegetarian versions of it too. Because it's already expanded and broken down, they become like mini sponges mm. as well. It's a very different texture when it's mm. cooked. Obviously these are already rehydrated, but this now feels like it's been mm. rehy rehydrated mm. with the cooking liquid. And intensified as well. Yeah. And I think when we look at global food, there's lots of similarities. I would see a very similar thing across maybe Spain or Europe, but with chickpeas as the kind of the base to a stew or a cassoulet. We do know from archaeological digs that this process has happened to corn for about three and a half thousand years. A very common dish that's eaten all over Mexico and all throughout the year, but also has a big role in celebrations. So for example, at New Year's, it is this kind of food that is added to the feast that they eat. It's very filling, and I think a lot more satisfying as well. I could see myself using that cooking at home. Real lovely warmth to it. I've never had anything that tastes like that. It's absolutely delicious. This soup and stew, there's lots of different varieties of it. In fact, Tomasina Myers, so uh, founder of Oaxaca, so Mexican restaurant around the world, in her new cookbook, Vegetarian, she's got a version that is much lighter, with lots of spring greens and the hominy. So the question on all of our lips, is this hominy for your home, or is it not corn to be? Crap hun, but not a crap product. <laughs> Hominy for my home. <laughs> Just like Lady Gaga would say, I was corn this way. It was no better. No, but it's at least... It's, you Not know, even it's relevant. Got, yeah, of course she's relevant. She's just done the soundtrack for Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two. Where in the world are we going now? Ooh, uh... Spam. It looks like a mortadello version of Spam. <laughs> Mortadella is a good example, as is bologna. It's thick cut Billy Bear ham mm -hmm. with chunks of over gelatinated jelly in it. I, I mean, yeah, as a description, you're pretty much bang on. 
Well, it is a pork sausage, seasoned. Those bits in the middle are pig skin. Pig skin? Which okay. gives you, so absolutely the gelatinous kind of texture that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But where in the world do you think it's from? Poland. Whoa, well, no. Canada. It's not Canada. This is Cha Bi from Vietnam. Ooh. We were both very, very, very wrong. Hard, yeah. Vietnamese pork roll. Oh, do you know what? Fish sauce. Now, now it's written there. And the whole thing is kind of pounded pork with the pork skin put through it, plus potato starch, garlic, black pepper, some seasoning. The seasoning might include fish sauce. And then it is wrapped very tightly in banana leaf and boiled. But once it's been boiled, providing you don't get water in, it will keep at room temperature for about a week. Wow. I'm a bit like Spam, I'm not like a massive fan of the texture, but flavour-wise, it's actually quite delicious. Would you like to try it in a dish that would commonly use it? Yes. Yes. And me. Flipping <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Probably one of Vietnam's most famous exports. Yes. The banh mi sandwich. We got one each. Look at them. We do want to stress this isn't the super traditional bread, which I suppose would have more of a French influence. What you have got though is pate. You've got your Vietnamese pork roll with the pig skin in it. Then some pickled veg. Uh, you've got loads of fresh herbs, including um, Thai basil and then all your sauces as well. Spectacular sandwich. That is a phenomenal sandwich. There's a texture that we're not familiar with on its own. We're a bit, they find it, find it odd. In a sandwich, and it really works. Usually with a sandwich this dense, you'd mm. expect it to be heavy mm. and chewy. Mm -hmm. And it is none of those things. It has every type of texture apart from that going on every type of flavour mm. going on with the fresh and the zingy. Mm. But actually, the pepperiness from the meat comes through a lot. So in process, the Vietnamese pork roll is very similar to something like bologna or mortadella, which is the Italian version, would be cut wafer thin, very, very thin, and put into sandwiches. Here, slightly thicker and spread over with the liver pate. But it's also used in a number of other dishes, so it can be cut up and added to pho or other broths. Um, and a number of other dishes um, as well. I can imagine that working really, really well in a pho um, and other broths, so I think that'd be fantastic. So the last question, Vietnamese sausage. Chabi or not chabi? Oh, oh wow. wow. Oh, it has to be chabi. That's spectacular. Not just because of the sandwich that it was put it in. It did help. But it did help. <laughs> but I would really love to try that. Mm in other dishes as well. I want to try it as a fritter. I want to try it fried in potato starch. I want to try it in pho. What a day. Oh, that I'm was only number two. Only halfway. Let's bring on round three then. Number three, where in the world are we going next? I'm excited. Keep going. Let's keep. It was good while it lasted. It was good it's while Harry it Potter's floppy wand. <laughs> <laughs> it looks plastic. It feels plastic. What? Have you licked it? I'm not eating it. And it tastes kind of nothing. It's definitely not something you would typically eat in that form. It kind of needs hydrating. Typically, you would soak it warm water for a short amount of time or cold water for a longer amount of time, even overnight, before it's then boiled or steamed or cooked. It's got like a phyllo pastry-esque okay. to it. I reckon this might come from in the sea. Or you something. think it's an animal? No. So I it's think it plant. might be a, a plant, like a... Like a sea plant. We don't know. No clue. These are bean curd skins or tofu skins. And these are the dried stick version. So bean curd sticks. I don't understand, if I'm honest. So, so cast your mind back to when we had the Colombian hot chocolate, Barry. Oh, and you yeah. said the bit you didn't like was the skin that yep. forms on top of things. Yes. If you're boiling soya bean milk, a skin forms. And if you're careful enough, you can lift that skin up, 
so that it drops and dangles down and then you dry it and it becomes that. So zero waste. That is the skin from the top of the bean curd as it's boiling. But where in the world do you think it might be from? Japan. I'm going to go South Korea. It wouldn't surprise me if both of those nations also use the ingredient, but we have sourced ours from China. China. Oh, China. That's how it's sold. You'll find in sort of Chinese supermarkets in the UK, readily available if you order online, if you haven't got a Chinese supermarket near you. I don't think I've ever seen them. No. Before. Would you like to try it once it's cooked? Yes. I think so. <laughs> that is stunning. I'm confused. I'm intimidated, but I'm also <laughs> stunned. So this is sea bass with pak choy and ginger. The bean curd sticks have been soaked and then rehydrated and then boiled um, to give you that texture, which is kind of reminiscent, I think of sort of almost like shiitake mushroom. Oh, hello. Sometimes called tofu noodles or, or bean curd noodles. Mm -hmm. Well, that's remarkable. <laughs> you know how like, Penne pasta, big hole in the middle, capture more sauce. Mm. This has a thousand holes in it. So it's got all the juices getting caught up in and amongst the strands, and therefore carries all that flavour. It's become really bouncy as a texture. Mm. There's a slight, slight chew to it, but the flavour is now every other flavour that's in that broth. Which if you think about tofu, we often talk about it as kind of like a sponge or a vehicle for other flavour, and you can fry it to get a crisp on it, or you can put it into broth and it kind of soaks up whatever you cook it in. This is doing a very similar thing. The process of making this is fascinating, the way they have often big like sheet pans of soya milk, soya bean milk bubbling away, and then they can basically cut around the edges and they lift it very carefully. You get a whole sheet kind of come up together and then they go again till another skin forms and up it goes again. So it is a brilliant way of using something that would otherwise be thrown away, often used in mock as mock meat in Chinese restaurants. I can imagine that being instead of meat in a vegetarian dish. But then this is used mock duck, often mock chicken, as kind of a replacement, but ultimately it's its own wonderful thing and hugely nutritious because it's its own protein source because it's come off of soybeans. I've got a store cupboard with far too many choices of pastas and noodles. This would fit amongst those, fine. I don't know if it would fit into my style of cooking at home, but if I saw it on a menu mm. in a restaurant, I'd happily order it. Are you in favour of the tofu skins or are you not for skins? Wow. So am I... In fact, do you like those or not? <laughs> <laughs> I am not for skins at home, um, but if I'm out and about, I am for skins. I would disagree. I <laughs> Tofu skins all the way. <laughs> One more. Let's bring them around four. <sighs> you did this to yourself, Evers. <laughs> okay, last treat for today. Lift the cloche. Pistachio. There is pistachio present, but what's the whole thing? It looks a bit like nougat. Not what I expected. It's very nougat, nou, nougat y. Nou, nougat y. Nougat -ry, yeah. Yeah, point, yeah. Nougat, yeah. Nougat -ry. Oh, it's a right. very unusual texture for sure. It is. It's chalky. But when it kind of hits your mouth and it attaches the moisture, it starts then to come together. Into um, what? Paste. A, a pasty? Paste. Yeah. Sometimes they're made with orange, sometimes made with vanilla, sometimes made with cocoa. This one's rolled in pistachios, but it's actually vanilla based. I quite like it. I think I love it a little bit. Oh. It's like flavours wise, mm. this is really me. This is halva. So it is made from sesame seed or sunflower seed, depending on where you are in the world. It's that tahini kind of flavour. Tahini! Mixed with a lot of sugar and then cooked into that using often egg whites and things to, to bind it. Where do you think it originated from? My experience of this is I think I had it in Morocco. Turkey. It began in Persia, Persia. so now modern day Iran but also found all across Greece, Turkey, the Middle East, as well as the Balkans. So the likes of Ukraine make halva, but from sunflower seeds rather than sesame seeds. So it is something that's from all over. Even Argentina make a version using peanuts. Oh, wow. 
often sold in tins or pots that can be block shaped. This one here is with cocoa that I've just slid in. And absolutely, it can just be enjoyed as a confectionery cut up and nibbled, but would you like it a bit more in situ, i.e. accompanied with some other things? Oh, yes, please. With a coffee, lovely. I wasn't expecting just a cake to right. land, land there with, with a glass of milk. This is a bit of an experiment, but a traditional Persian drink, and therefore the origins of this, is just a slightly diluted salted yogurt. I guess it's similar to like an Indian lassi. And we've also baked it into a cake. Salty drinks. Salty drinks. Not for you. What? Oh. It's like if you put mm. white chocolate mm. in a cake mm. and it all caramelises at the bottom in the, in the crusty bit. That was very much an experiment. We'd never tried it before. We let you cut into it on screen. It's always brave. And the second however there you've got is with chocolate. Sometimes you'll get them then dipped in chocolate. So they're chocolate coated however, which is absolutely delicious. Mm. All in all, mm. it's absolutely delicious, but it's quite an unusual texture. Much like our British fudge, which is very buttery, this That's is hard. more chalky or salty. I get it. With the sugar, the salty works. Yeah. And centuries, centuries old. I mean, cookbooks that stem back to like the ninth century were talking about how this was made. With all the others, I've struggled to work out how I could get them into my home. This is easy. Like, it's an after dinner mm. treat with some other chocolates. This will work perfectly. Yeah, definitely. Mm. That is perfect as part of a platter with some, mm. maybe some Ferrero Rocher. What? I was thinking what's Turkish a, Delight, but a fine. Party you should throw in? It's a fusion party, Barry. <laughs> in terms of where you can get it, however, it is something that in the UK you'd find in the world food aisle in your supermarket much more readily. Um, alternatively, absolutely, you'll find it in Turkish delis, sort of Middle East delis, um, Balkan delis. Last question then. Will you however them again, or have you however them enough? <laughs> All right, stop it. Best yet, mate, I'll give you that. It was the accent that you put on the same time. Halver. I'll halver it again, please. I will halver it with him. Well, what did you make of those? Have you heard of them before? Where do you use them in your cooking at home? Let us know in the comments down below. Yep, so many of these global ideas come from you guys, so keep suggesting them down below and see if you can penetrate our London bubble. Yeah, you know when you get the <laughs> you pull your cat food out, right. and it's got the jelly around. Barry, it, Barry, it's Barry, 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 Barry. This is somebody's favourite thing in the world. <laughs> they also might like cat food. <laughs> 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 I don't know.